Yeah, I look back at it with pride. You know, I'm really proud of what I've achieved here. Um, all the trophies I've won and all the great memories I've had. Um, but certainly not winning the Premier League will certainly be a dent in that. Um, there's nothing I can do about it now. Um, and it's certainly a regret I'll go away with. But I've got to look at the big picture. You know, growing up as a boy, dreaming of playing for Liverpool just that one time and sitting here now with 708 appearances, I've achieved an awful lot more than what I thought I would at the beginning. Well, I think every season um, this squad and this club always tries to add good quality players to it to challenge for the next season what's available, what trophies we can try and win. Um, I think this season we fell a bit short, um, but I still feel that there's a fantastic core of players here with huge potential. Uh, I'm hoping that the owners will, will back Brendan again and, and, and bring in that bit of quality that can help us go one step further next year. Uh, we've come very close in a couple of cup competitions this year and we've also got clo close to the top four positions and that's with losing uh, arguably the best player in the world last year in Luis Suarez and also not having our star striker available for much of the season in Daniel Sturridge. So to come so close uh, without them two available um, I think we've done okay, but I think next year we can go one better. Well, that's, you'll have to ask Brendan what his uh, next two team selections are going to be, but I want to play every minute possible, of course I do. He'll know that. Um, I think all you people will know that, and um, that's what I intend to do. I want to put in a good performance personally at the weekend and try and get a win and say goodbye to everyone at Anfield and all the supporters worldwide but I still feel um, I want to be involved against Stoke. Stephen, it's been a week dominated by yourself, a lot of interviews, a lot of build up to the match at the weekend, this room I don't think has ever been this full either. You sat here now, how does it, how does it make you feel all this attention on this call? Well, I don't really. I'm not really one for attention or focus, and I feel a bit sorry for my teammates this week. Um, obviously, a lot of the tension's on me, and I'm sure it will be at the weekend. But you know, when that whistle goes, it'll all be about the team and, and the team trying to get three points. Um, so all I can do is apologise if I've took any attention away from all the players. It, it's never been my attention to grab any glory or attention all alone. I, I'm aware it's all about the team at this club and. You know, from day one, I've always tried to uh, pull in the right direction for the team. Uh, unfortunately, this weekend, it's only normal after 17 years that the attention falls on me. But I apologise for it. You do have the status, though, as a, a Liverpool legend. Do you see yourself like that? Are you comfortable with that? No, I don't think so. I don't think uh, many players, you know, look at themselves as, you know, what they've done, what they achieve, or what the opinion is uh, out in the open about that player. Uh, for me. I just work as hard as I can. I try and do the best I can. Um, I've I've loved every minute of representing this club and the supporters, and you know every single game I've tried to do my best. Um, other people have opinions of you and put you in certain categories. They compare you to um, players before or players coming through. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, I just try and be the best I can be. Um, Steve, you're known as a pretty strong character, but how emotional do you think Saturday will be? I don't know. Um, I haven't got a clue. I don't know what it's going to be like come the end of the game um, when I get the chance to say uh, goodbye for real. Uh, I've been dreading this moment uh, in a strange way um, because uh, I'm going to miss it so much. You know, playing at Anfield, playing in front of the fans. I'm going to miss playing with my teammates. Um, so it will be emotional, but the plans to try and keep it together, stay strong, and, and try and avoid the tears. Mm, I hope not. <laughs> Stephen, you've got some great footage of you as a, a young boy, probably eight or nine, picking up a, a player of the season award. What would the eight or nine year old Stephen Gerrard think about the career that was ahead of him if you could have told him back then? Well, he, he'd have certainly have grabbed it with both hands. Uh, if someone had said to me when I first started going to the, the academy, as it's called now, at eight years of age, when he used to get two buses up to Anfield to train, uh, you're going to play 708 games for Liverpool and you're going to 
win the trophies you're going to win but you're going to have some lower moments and you're going to have some high moments that are going yeah that'll do for me I'll take that You know, still to this day, the hair's on my neck stand up. Um, it's the best night of my life. I think it's the pinnacle of every every footballer domestically. I mean, it's the best cup to win. Um, and it's just the the way we went about it and how the evening panned out. Um, I think it's going to go down in history as probably the best Champions League final ever. Um, and as captain of that team, uh, there was no, no prouder man on the planet that night. I think a game will definitely be the Everton game when I got the hat trick. After all the stick I've had off the, the blue noses over the years, that was a, a nice feeling. Um, but I think if you're talking about one individual goal that was so important for the team and the club uh, that helped us progress to that uh, incredible night in Istanbul, it'd have to be Olympiacos. You know, the timing of the goal and what was needed on that night. Um, you know, in the dressing room after, I realised it was an important goal to help the team progress, but it wasn't till. Istanbul had sort of calmed down a couple of weeks later when I sort of reflected on the whole journey of the Champions League triumph that I realised, you know, Istanbul goal, uh, sorry, the Olympiacos goal was such a huge goal. And who or, or what would be your most difficult goodbye? Difficult goodbye as in? Are you saying goodbye to a person in particular or, or somebody? No, I think it'll be the, the supporters as a whole. Um, they've given me incredible support since day one. And They've been there for me throughout this journey and as I said earlier, I've had some really cruel lows and I've had some incredible highs, um, but their support to me has never never changed. Uh, there might be a few individuals who's changed the opinion on me over the 17 years, which is fine, but I think as a whole, you know, at Anfield and around the world, um, I've had incredible support, so that'll be the most emotional goodbye. But you know, just here at Melwood, you know, the staff, the players that I work with day in, day out, that's what I'm going to miss the most. Um, and also playing at Anfield. Chris, yes, Stephen, congratulations on a great career. Thank you. Um, if you look a little bit forward, do you have ambitions of becoming a coach or manager one day? And in long term terms, maybe return to Liverpool and be a manager here? I think it's a bit early to answer all of them questions. Um, I've certainly got ambitions to stay in the game. Uh, I'm co uh, currently taking out my UEFA coaching badges and trying to progress up that ladder. But I think to to take a position or a role at this football club, first and foremost, you have to be good enough. Um, you don't. You never take a role here on reputation or name. Um, you know the demands and the expectation at any role in this football club are so high. I think you'd be very naive and stupid to take a role just because you're Steven Gerrard or because you've had a, a good career on the pitch. So I think um, in a couple of years' time, when I've come out of the city for a bit and I reflect and look in, um, if there's a role offered that I feel like I can contribute and that I'm good enough for, I'll certainly consider it because you know I've been coming to this club since I was eight years of age and um, I do feel as if you know I can contribute in, in some role in the future. I hope so, um, but that's not just me, you know, there's been many a great players before me, uh, many a great role models and inspirations uh, who helped me certainly achieve what I have done today and um, if younger players um, want to look to me and take little bits from my game and see what I've done on and off the pitch for the last 17 years and that helps them, I'll be a very proud man. I think from a coaching point of view, from the ages of 8 to 18, I have to mention uh, Steve Iway, Hugh McCauley and Dave Shannon because they prepared me to become a professional. They helped me um, as a person and as a player to be ready for all the challenges that come your way once you become a first-team player. Then I owe uh, an awful lot to Gerard Hulia who gave me my opportunity here. Um, he was almost like a father figure, put his arm around me and you know, helped me an awful lot tactically, improved me a lot. 
and I, I you know I won the, my first three trophies in the treble under under Gerard, and then he he gave me the captaincy at 23, which was a very bold thing to do, you know, at a club this size um, to take the captaincy off a fantastic player like Sammy Appiah and and give it to me was a very brave thing to do. Um, so I know I owe an awful lot to him. I think I'd take bits and bobs from them all. Um, if I did ever want or become a manager, um, I think I'd like to do it my way and, and take bits and bobs from them all. I've been very lucky to work with some fantastic managers over the year. Um, you know, certainly Brendan. Now I've enjoyed the last three years with him. I, I almost wish I met him uh, a lot earlier when I was in the peak of my playing days, because I certainly think um, I'd certainly be sitting here talking about trophies now. Um, you know, getting the chance to play for Kenny Daglish was a wonderful experience as well. Someone who I watched many tapes of, and is my dad's hero as well. That was a a great time. Um, you know, Roy Hodgson's time didn't work out here, but I've got a good relationship with him. Um, more so in England, of course. But you know, all the managers I've I've had a great relationship with, um, and I've always tried to learn off them all. You know, Rafa Benitez as well, who. You know, we shared Istanbul with. You know, tactically uh, as a player, he improved me so much as well. So, it's difficult to pick one or you know, pick who I liked the most, who I thought was the best. You know, but as a whole, I've been so lucky to work with so many. What options are there? I think they've all got the same, the same chance as myself. Uh, I think if you want to be a footballer, you've got to practice as much as you can. There's plenty of areas around council estates now that I had available where you can practice, and you know there's plenty of DVDs and footage to watch, to to look at players, to inspire to. Um, you know the opportunities there for them. Um, I think the difference nowadays is they've got a lot more distractions. Um, you know when I was a young kid, for me the priority for me was my ball on football kits and you know I wanted it and I worked so hard for it so if they want to follow in the footsteps and not just myself all the players in the Premier League now they've got to want it and they've got to work for it. I think it will happen again. Um, you know this club's well renowned for bringing bringing talent through. You know Robbie Fowler, Steve McManaman, Michael Owen, Davey Thompson, Danny Murphy signed from Crew at a later age. Jamie, myself, um, John Flanagan. You see Jordan Ibe now and and Raheem Sterling. If the players are good enough um, and they get themselves into position in, into position and they're prepared for it, Brendan's shown that he'll give them the chance, and I'm sure managing the future will as well. But first and foremost, they've got to be good enough. For me, I'm always going to be biased towards this club, and um, I said earlier in the week, my advice to Raheem is where he's at now at his age. I think he needs a manager um, who believes in him, who's going to play him, who's going to help coach him, who's going to learn him. Um, and I think there's no one better out there than Brendan Rodgers. Um, so for me, my opinion is he should sign a new deal here. Um, I think it'll be the best for his career. Um, but that's something I can't control. But the young lads here, they've got no better uh, manager to learn off, you know, and, and get attention off because Brendan's a, a fantastic man manager and he puts a lot of time and effort into every individual in the squad. Um, I think the danger for these younger players is um, they want it all too soon and and they chase it and they become one one of a number if they go to any other club and they don't get that attention or that love or that care that they'll get here at Liverpool. My family, I think they're the number one. My family and friends who've been with me every single game, um, or the majority of the games, home and away, all over Europe. and They're the people that are with you in and around the games uh, when you're either on an incredible high or you don't want to come out of your room. They're the people that help pick you up and, and get you going for that next game. So, 
my family and friends are the most important people to me and then obviously everyone connected to the club and also a special mention to the media as well um, you know you have always been respectful and honest with me and I've tried to do the same back so I thank you all of you as well thank you